I don't know where you're watching this from in the world, but it's really hot here. Uh, today it said it was like 103, 104, but it feels like 112 or 114. Jesus. Uh, I think Monday I almost fainted or passed out from the heat or had a heat stroke or heat exhaustion because I just was feeling weird when I got out of work. Got home, took a sh cold shower, and I just felt a lot better. Still drained, but I've been taking it easy at work. I've been drinking. Even, I drink a lot of water at work, but you even more splashing water in my face. Hanging out in the freezer for a little bit just to cool off, staying out of the sun. It's just, and it's been working. I've felt fine uh, last two days. Uh, maybe I'll get out of get out of work early tomorrow, and uh, can do a video. So I'm gonna review. I'm gonna review some. I, I mean, I went to the library, got a few things, and I got the Quiet Earth. Have you ever seen this? I I don't know if I've seen it, but just I know that cover. And I got the Criterion Pink Flamingos Blu-ray. It comes in. I don't want to go over there to get it. I'll show it in another video. It comes with a barf bag and some other cool stuff. It has a like a, a conversation between Jim Jarmusch and John Waters, and a like a, a full-length documentary made in '98. It was really good. It really inspired me to work on the zine more. So I'm gonna re review an, a movie that someone else requested. Uh, my good zine buddy, Lom, who does film trauma, he does a zine and he, and he does mo makes movies too. He has a website, www.filmtrauma.com uh, you can check out. And he suggested I review Combat, Combat Shock. And I had the, the VHS somewhere. I actually don't have the real VHS. I have a, a, I have a bootleg under the name American Nightmare. Uncut, uncut print. Uh, I got this around 2000, maybe 2001. I found uh, this guy who did a cinema bazaar, a bazaar cinema. I think it was a bazaar cinema, and he would he had this catalog. That's when I really started finding movies that I never even heard of. And if you remember, there was a a death metal zine called Sounds of Death and Chaz Ballin did reviews in it and he reviewed American Nightmare aka Combat Shock and they had some pictures from it and just the way he reviewed it I was like oh, I gotta see this and Bizarre Cinema had it I ordered it got this and it's a really bad quality second it's at least second I mean it, Maybe second. I want to say third because how bad it looks. And I was going to watch it, but then it's on Amazon Prime. I was like, let me just see how it looks. And it, look, it looks good. It actually looks great, I thought. So, I guess I'll just call it Combat Shock. Uh, Combat Shock is a better title than American Nightmare. So, it was made in 1986. Written and directed by Buddy Giovanazzo. So, I've seen... One other movie by Buddy G that I actually have that I, that I got when Hollywood Video was going out of business. I think that's where I got it. I got um, No Way Home with Tim Roth and uh, John Russo. And oh, I can't remember the girl's name. She was, she's been in a lot of movies. She's in Payback. She played a... Gibson's like junkie wife. I think she was a junkie in that. 
She's really good. And No Way Home is great. And I don't know why Buddy G, he's made, he made a movie like Life in Cracktown or Life is Hot in Cracktown, which I haven't seen. Which looks just almost like a normal movie. Because Combat Shock is just... If you haven't seen it, I mean, it's on Amazon Prime. I mean, we could see it anywhere now, but I remember that I thought this was a movie that you just can't get this anywhere. And I, I found something special, you know, this guy that made tapes of movies. And I was, so it was always like super underground. It came out in 1986. By like 88, 89, I had seen Bad Taste, Street Trash, Brain Dead, Basket Cake, well, you know, those filmmakers, Evil Dead. But just I hadn't seen like, any of the cannibal movies. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you're not just not gonna see. But yeah, this I'd never seen until early 2000s. So I watched it earlier, and like I said, looks great. But man, Combat Shock just has this look. It could exist in the same world as uh, Deadbeat at Dawn. Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Oh, I, I had to know that I should have wrote it down. Clean Shaven, maybe. Even, oh yeah, it's like a cross between like, in between Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer and Street Trash. Oh, that was, that was another like New York movie. It just has this like, ugly, alley, gritty, disgusting trash world of, of Staten Island in 1986 it just looks it looks like a barren wasteland like this could be like a post apocalyptic movie if they changed him if he actually had like a but anyway it just looks grim uh, the main character Frank Frankie Dunlin he's uh, returned from Vietnam he's been I guess he's been home from Vietnam for a while he has a wife and a baby a one year old they live in a slum. They've been, a, they just got evicted. There's no running water, no food. Uh, it seems like all he does is wander around all day and, and like a zombie in the days. But he's thinking about like his time in Vietnam. It's never left him. His wife, uh, I would say she's nagging, but everything she says, she does it in a nagging way, I guess. But everything she's saying is like, you know, we don't have food. We don't have water we don't have money we don't have anything she's like you're not doing anything and frankie he's actually it's played by rick giovanazzo the director's brother and i thought he was really good in this because he looks like a scumbag but i felt sorry for him and he almost he seems kind of like a cool dude someone you would know and you'd be able to talk to hang around he's not he's not a nutcase he's not violent uh, well, not till the end. He just seems like a, like a good guy who just got dealt a bad hand. But yeah, he's not doing anything. He says like, his wife's like, you know, you gotta find a job. And he's like, there are no jobs. The whole world, the whole, all of America's like this. And then she actually says, well, all of America is, gets to eat. So he, he's having like in, internal monologue. He's having flashbacks. There's some really good lines in here, and uh, something about the wars. And oh, I can't remember. But one, another one is uh, I can't tell where one torture ends and the next begins. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff they're fuzzy on, kind of because uh, he did something happen in Vietnam and then he was interrogated. He was actually like held prisoner by the Vietnamese, and then I guess they gave him back. Somehow he got away, or and then there was like a, a village massacre that they think he he was involved in. It's all kind of sketchy. So uh, he just leaves the apartment and goes for a walk in his uh, crumbling neighborhood, in Staten Island. Man, I hope I'm sure Staten Island is a very nice place, but in 1986, wherever they filmed this, it looks horrible. And their baby is hideous. It is disgusting. The way this thing cries, the noise it makes, 
the I was messaging a friend and he said, Oh, that movie with like the the eraser head type baby and I think this baby it, it doesn't look as real but it is more disgusting than than the eraser head baby. I remember I was watching a eraser head and my sister walked by and I was like, What do you think of that thing? The baby and she's all it, I remember my sister, she's like, it looks like it's trying to be cute. And I was like, oh, that's weird. That's a weird take. I think she was only like 10 or 11 or 12 when I asked her like, what she thought of, of it. This baby is not trying to be cute. It is just, oh, it's so nasty. And maybe more it's the noise it makes. It's constantly whining and wheezing and crying. And, oh, man. And it said on IMTV that they made it for 140 bucks. And it, was, it looks fake, but there is something lifelike about it. And it's like moving. Ugh. Those are like the. Might be the. When the baby's on screen, or when you just hear it, those are like the most harrowing parts of the movie for me. And his wife's in there, and I guess it's her baby, and she loves it, and she's used to it, but she's just like. Walking around her their little apartment, she's trying to watch TV. It doesn't work. And that baby's crying, man. And ugh, ugh. So Frankie, he's walking around his neighborhood, just thinking to himself. And then he gets, he runs in ugh, into this guy Paco and his two hood, hoodlums. I guess uh, Frankie had borrowed money in the past and. They want it back and they rough him up and they, you know, they're just real crude and saying they're gonna make his family pay if he can't pay. So he's got that hanging over him. And then there's a, for how grim this movie is and depressing and bleak and sad, it has like a sense of humor about it that permeates the whole movie, I thought. Because he's just walking in some dilapidated, isolated, desolated spot and someone comes up behind him and they say something like, don't move or I'll, I'll fucking kill you. And then uh, Frankie turns around and it's a guy he knows and the, guy, the guy's like, oh, hey Frank, I'm sorry. And like this guy was just, like, he had a gun and he's threatening, but fortunately for Frankie, the guy knew him. And the guy, the guy's a junkie, his name's Mike. And he, much like Frankie, I thought this guy, if he wasn't such a, rat bastard junky piece of slime he seemed like a good guy like he's all you, so you think i like being like this he's all, i need a hundred dollars a day to to take care of my habit he's all he's like knows he's a scumbag but he's just in too deep to do anything about it saying how he hasn't eaten in three days and he feels like he's gonna explode he was really good and he was like like i said funny and kind of likable um Really, I don't know why, well, there is a reason, but they spend some time on Mike. I guess it all adds up, because I thought, because they, they cut away to the Mike the Junkie a few times, and I was all, you know, this is Frankie's movie, but there is a reason. And yeah, this movie is just uh, Frankie walking around, meeting other low-life, sad sacks, uh decrepit destitute people everywhere he goes to a there is one I guess this is the one bright hope and some gleam of hints of hope he goes to a, an unemployment agency and this girl pulls up on a motorcycle and I remember this part like she looks at him but I don't remember she's kind of she kind of like like get on and go with me you know she just nods and like you know and I was like, man, do it, Frankie. This is your one way out of this miserable existence you have. You could get away um, from your wife. And she's pregnant again. That disgusting baby. The people he owes money. Just whole horrible situation and place he's in. I even imagine like him taking off with her. And they would go and like camp in the woods. And they would, he would just talk. And he would be in a cleaner, better place, but he doesn't get on the bike. He just looks at her and 
Then nothing comes of him at the. Oh yeah, no, he he does get him to the employment agency, and no, there's nothing. No, it's a two week wait on like physical labor, and I was like, hey, you can get a job. It'd be oh, well, I don't know. It seemed like it'd be easy to get a job if you want one. And so yeah, uh, there's stuff with Mike. There's a good part where he meets up. He does get some. They never say what he's doing. I assumed heroin. But he gets a little bit and he goes, he doesn't have a needle to shoot up, so he goes to this other junkie and just, just scream at each other and begging, like the other guy's begging him for, oh, it's, so, it's another disgusting, sickening scene watching a junkie like beg for, for drugs. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> and then I guess I really can't tell you anymore. I, I, you have. I think it's. I think this movie is great. I should have bought like a DVD, Blu-ray, whatever before. I I just thought I would watch my VHS, but I need really need to upgrade. Uh, thanks to Long Film Trauma for suggesting this. I've been thinking about it because I did see it was on Amazon Prime, and and I did watch it to see what the quality was, and I don't know if if there's a better quality of it, but I thought it was really good. It has the I wonder if he filmed it on, I don't know if he filmed it on 16 millimeter, but it just looks great. It, it, it looks better than Deadbeat at Dawn. That, yeah, it's another, it kind of reminds me of Deadbeat at Dawn, just this grim, fatalistic view of, of life. And usually I don't really like that stuff anymore, but I would watch this again. I just, it, it's almost, in a way to me, it's like, almost like a fantasy. Because I've never seen life like this, thankfully. Hopefully, you haven't either <laughs> so but yeah Frankie finally meets he uh, gives in to the life of crime and he robs a lady and then he runs into Paco and his gang and there's a there's another this is funny made me laugh out loud they're, they're chasing Frankie and there's a guy like a heavy metal punk looking dude that's in Paco's gang. And they're chasing Frankie down these tracks or down an alley. I think there's some tracks. There's a guy just walking, he has a stick and he's like sweeping. Like it doesn't even like he doesn't even notice them. And that uh, heavy metal punk dude just punches him in the stomach while he's running by. And the dude crumples up crumples in a heap. I, don't know, I just thought that was funny. That's like some of the humor. Music, there's some really good music I thought in here. So <sighs> I don't want to tell you what happens. I think you really should see it, but it it's horrible. It's just gross. It's violent. It's, it's not gory. There is gore in here, though. Yeah. In his ne in his Neom vet in his Vietnam vet in his Vietnam flashbacks, he sees like body parts and torsos, and that was it looked good, it looked real. But there's just an explosion of violence at the end of this movie that you just have to see. I, I don't want to tell you about it. I don't want to ruin it. But it's... Uh, it's horrible, but it looked really good. Like, There's one scene, like, oh, man, it looks... Hell yeah, it's horrible, but it looked really cool. I was like, that's the best... Like, a really good one. But I don't want to tell you what it is. So... Is there anything else? I, I think you should buy it but yeah like I really don't like these kinds of movies anymore but I I do like combat shock I would I have to get it now thanks mom um, but I want to give it a four out of five it's so low budget but oh man buddy Giovanazzo why isn't he why didn't he make more movies in between this he made a couple uh, but and he should it's him and a, f a few other directors that just didn't get the break, and it's r really sucks. He could have made I don't know what it, else he could have made, but he could have made some, like I don't see him making like a Nightmare on Elm Street or a Friday the Thirteenth movie or Halloween, but he could have gone in a direction that, that would have allowed him to make some really good movies, whatever genre they would have been. Even more crime, but anyway, uh, Combat Shock. 
it's on Amazon Prime. Maybe it's everywhere now, but I'm glad I watched it. I'm going to watch it again, and you should watch it too. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow after I brave the heat and see how it goes, okay?